I consider pseudocode and flowcharts as one of the most important things you can develop uh, for someone who's going to um, go into the software development uh, field. For if you can't take problems and convert them to some type of logical representation, either through pseudocode or flowcharts, your problems aren't, uh, your programs aren't going to work correctly. So we're going to take a look at uh, the pseudocode example and the flowchart. And in this assignment, uh, they were worth double the other points. So let's look at write an algorithm to settle the following question. Now we're going to take parts of this, and one of the things you'll notice here is interest is compounded monthly at 0.5% uh, per month. So 0.5% percent is a month and since it's compounded monthly we have to do this monthly not yearly. Some of you uh, attempted to do it uh, per year. You start out, bank account starts with this and in pseudocode it's quite common to write some English but um, with quite a bit of math. Math is a very common language so rather than being wordy and saying the balance, uh, the bank balance starts at a thousand dollars. Just put bank balance equals a thousand or balance equals a thousand. Everyone will understand what that means. What you're trying to do is use uh, sort of an English approach, but you want to be as um, as efficient as possible to get the information across. And if you have a long sentence that someone has to understand, um, that's not as good as sometimes just putting. Uh, a variable name uh, and a value. That's often easier to understand. Now when we start the number of months at the very beginning is zero. So what we're going to try to do is we're starting with ten thousand dollars and we want to apply a process that happens in a loop and that's going to decrement that balance and eventually that balance is going to get to zero and at that point we're going to stop. So we need to count the number of times we're going through a loop so we need a counter. So this is going to count and num month, or you could just say number of months, but again, it's just a variable name, equals zero. Now you need to do a loop. So all programmers are going to be familiar with what while means. So while balance is greater than zero, do this loop. And so I put do this loop and end loop. There are different ways. When you... Um, when you get more experience, your pseudocode becomes more uh, well-defined. Uh, this is what we're going to start with, and this is just my example. Everyone's going to write their pseudocode slightly differently. But sometimes you want your pseudocode to be part of a design review. Uh, so other people are going to think that other people are going to read this, so you want them to be able to understand it too. So that sets up our while loop. While the balance is greater than zero, not until, some of you use the word until, that's not correct either, it needs to be while. So the first thing, or somewhere in this loop, we need to increment the number of uh, months, that's our loop counter, and it doesn't really matter if we do it here or here. Now, it's a little ambiguous whether each month we deduct 500, but we also uh, add interest, and so it's a little ambiguous the order of these two, and the order of these two is gonna matter slightly but it, I didn't take any points off for if you uh, did one before the other. Now, how do we compute the interest that you're going to get each month? Well, your interest is 0.5% or 0 0.005 times the balance. So your new balance is going to be the old balance plus this. Or, this is a shorthand way to do it. You can simply take your balance, multiply it by uh, this plus one. If you factor this out, we get one plus 0 0.005 or 1.005. So this is going to compute the new balance taking into account the monthly interest. Then we deduct 500 and you could put $500 from the balance. And we're going to do that loop. Until the balance is, we do the loop as long as the balance is greater than zero. When the balance uh, d dips below zero, then we go here. So we have some number in the number of months. Maybe it's uh, 50. We have to divide that by 12 
because it asked us for the number of years. So here it would be uh, four years, we'd get two over 12, which might be 4.2. And then we print the number of years. So this is somewhat, it didn't need to be exactly as I have here, but this is the process that you need to have for your pseudocode. And the idea is that you can almost give this to anyone and they should be able to code it directly. So you should be able to go from a problem statement to some type of diagram, whether it's pseudocode or a flowchart, and then you could give it to almost anyone to implement in any language. From here, we could go to Python or Java or C or any language. Second problem, it's a really good problem um, to attempt on your own. It's a traditional um, maze running type of algorithm and the idea is you can get out of any maze if you uh, put your hand on either the left or the right side of the maze and follow it through. Now it doesn't work on all mazes. Some mazes can have islands in it but uh, if it's what's called a simple maze that will get you out of the maze. Now how do we do this as an algorithm? Well we really need to put ourselves in the role of the robot and sort of say, okay, well, what's the most difficult thing uh, that a robot can do? And we'll put a few grid lines in here to, and then we're gonna put our robot in our grid. So we've got a robot that's coming in and all the robot can do, he's only got one sense. And some of you gave him more senses, but all he can sense, is there a wall directly in front of me? That's all. So that's the only test. We, I added a test, you know, am I at the exit? And that's fine. But let's suppose our robot's right here going this way. And we want to make sure we follow a right-hand uh, right part of our maze. Well, how would we do that? Well, that's not obvious down here because we can only go forward. But there becomes a question when our little robot gets right up there. If we're going to follow the right hand side, okay, so let's pretend we're right here. What we need to do is turn right. So we can start to build our flow chart. So TR will be turn right. And at that point, we will be this way. Um, now, I should almost have said. Let's suppose this wall wasn't even here. When I'm pointing, oh, let's do this again. I could be at a junction here. So my robot moves into this junction. One of the first things the robot needs to do is say, um, is I could say, is there a wall ahead? And if there's not, I could go forward. But I wouldn't be following the right-hand edge. And the only way I can follow the right-hand edge is if I actually turn and see if I go to the right. So we have to draw our maze and sort of play around with it and then construct the flowchart at the same time. So if I'm here like this, one of the first things I want to do is I want to turn right. And that will put me in this orientation, right here. Now I can do my test. Is there a wall ahead? There's not in this case. So if it was a no, I would know that I could go forward. And that would take me, let's suppose there's a, that would take me over into here. And I have a little loop here. So if I'm here, I want to check again to see if I can go right. So I could turn right. Is there a wall? At this point, there is a wall. So that's a yes. So I draw the yes loop here. And if I'm pointing down this way, what am I going to do? Well, I need to turn around, but I want to go back the way I came because maybe I could go down further. So let's just with this situation here. So let's say I turn 
I turn left, which puts me back in this orientation. And again, I'm going to go forward. So since I have forward here, I'm going to put it right up here. And that's going to move me into here. Okay, well, my little algorithm seems to be working. Do you think, uh, let's see if our algorithm can get us out of this type of situation here where we're at a dead end. We turn to the right, which means we turn this way. Is there a wall? Yep. Yeah. Okay, let's turn left. And really what I should do is check to see, is there a wall there? So, is there a wall? And there happens to be a wall, yes. So, I need to turn left again, so I'm pointing up this way. So I can see I've sort of got an error here. And I shouldn't have come off this point because if there was no wall, that's the only time I wanted to go forward. And the point of all this is that you really, there's no easy way to do the logic. You've actually got to draw it out and make sure your flow chart is actually going to work. So I'm going to show you a flow chart that after some work, and it takes some time to uh, develop this flow chart, that works. So this is a flow chart, and after you have a flow chart, as with anything, you need to test your flow chart. Okay, so you've come up with your flow chart, you think it works. Well, let, let's, so let's make some hypothetical little situations in our maze and see if they work. So if our robot is up here at a junction and it's gone this way, let's suppose, um, is it going to take the right path? Is it going to go right instead of going left? So let's suppose it's moved forward and it's up into this position. So we've moved forward. So Am I at the exit? No, it's not the exit, so I come down here and I say, I turn right. So my robot is now pointing that way. Is there a wall? Nope, there's no wall. So this should have said no here. Every decision should have a yes and a no answer. So no, I'm going to move forward and I'm going to be uh, here. And I'm continuing around. So we can see in this situation the robot properly navigated and made sure uh, that it went to the right hand side. You would have maybe a situation where a robot is going right here and is hitting a dead end and you want to make sure the robot turns around and comes back out of the dead end. So right now it's following this right hand side. Well let's see. We Am I at the exit? No. I'm going to turn right down here. Is there a wall? Yes, there is. So I'm going to turn left. That means I'm going to turn back this way. Is there a wall? No. I'm going to move forward. So now I'm into here. Uh, turn right. I'm down into here. Is there a wall? Yes. Can I turn left? So I'm back this way. Is there a wall? Yes. Now I rotate through here. And it says, oh, I turn left again, I'm up here. Is there a wall? Yes, I turn left again. And I'm going back the way I came. Is there a wall? No, so I move forward. So now I start to move out of that dead end this way. And you can test a lot of the uh, maze conditions by following your flow chart. So you need to make sure that your flow chart uh, is fully debugged. And the only way you can do that is Test your flowchart as you would any program by going through it by hand. Once we have a flowchart, it's relatively easy again to move from this type of logic into uh, any code, whether it be Python or Java or C or whatever. But even more uh, helpful is that all software designers go through code reviews. And it's really a good idea to have other people view your logic or your code. Well, you don't want to give them necessarily a lot of Python. You may want to give them, here's the logic that I think works. And it's much easier for someone to debug your logic at this level than it is to 
debug your logic and debug your syntax and code at the same time. So for some parts of code reviews, you want to give pseudocode or flowchart so that people can look at them. And they may pick up some errors in your flowchart before you even start to code. Moving from problems to logic diagrams like a flowchart or pseudocode really um, is the mark, I think, of, a, of a, the proper process you want to develop as a, as a software developer.